Pesci is an inventor, a writer, educator and broadcaster. In 1994, Pesci co-invented VRML, a 3D interface to the World Wide Web. Pesci has written five books, including The Playful World, How Technology is Transforming Our Imagination, which use toys such as Furby and PlayStation to explain our interactive future. As an educator, Pesci founded graduate programs in interactive media at both the University of Southern California's world-famous cinema school and the Australian Film, Radio and Television School. For the last six years, Pesci has been a panellist and judge on the ABC's hit series, The New Inventors, as well as a regular commentator on technology and society for Triple J Hack, The 7.30 Report, The 7pm Project and ABC Local Radio. In 2006, Pesci founded Future Street, a Sydney consultancy dedicated to helping clients negotiate the challenges presented by our hyper-connected future. Our keynote speaker and the man introducing the future, Mr. Mark Pesci. Good morning, everybody. I don't think I've ever had such a beautiful musical introduction to a talk before. It was amazing. So, although I'm here to talk about the future, you're going to find that I'm going to spend about half of my talk today talking about the past because. Although your theme this year is connecting, and it's a good theme, and it's the spirit of our age, talking about the future is a bit of a sure bet, because the future is the moment after next. The future is going to come of its own accord. What matters is that we connect, and not just that we connect, but how we connect. So this morning, what I want to do is I want to paint you a picture of how we came to be here. At the close of the first decade of the 21st century, busily doing lots of connecting, it feels like a new thing. It is not. The kit has changed. We have not. And it's only from an understanding of who we are and where we have come from that we can understand the world that we are hurtling toward. Connect, connect, connect. Why? Why are we so driven to connect? Now to explain this, and to reveal who it is that we have always been, I'm going to need to tell you two stories. They're interrelated, one will lead into the other, and you'll see how that happens. I am not going to say that these stories are God's honest truth. They are, to steal a phrase from Rudyard Kipling, they are just so stories. If they aren't true, they describe an arrangement of facts that are true enough. There's scientific evidence to support both of these stories, but neither of them is considered scientific canon. So please take everything I say with a bit of a grain of salt. Think of them more as fables than as facts. But remember that we have always used fables to illuminate the essence of ourselves. So, for our first story, we need to go back a long time. We need to go back before those folks, we need to go back. Before those folks, we need to go back. Before those folks, we actually need to go back. Before those folks, we need to go back about 10 million years. 10 million years ago was just after the line that became the human beings had broken away from the gorillas, before we broke away from the chimpanzees, which happened about 5 million years ago. A common ancestor that they, the scientists call Parolopithecus. Now, what do we know about Parolopithecus? Really not much. We have a few fragments of skeletons that were discovered in Spain about eight years ago. And if you squint just right, and you imagine some sort of mashup of chimpanzees and humans and throw just a little bit of gorilla in for good measure, you might be able to get a glimmer of what they look like. They're smaller than us, and they don't walk upright. That comes much later. But there's one thing that we know about Parolopithecus without any evidence from any skeleton. Parolopithecus was a social animal. Now, how do we know this? Well, we know this because of the three species that descend from Parolopithecus, humans, chimpanzees, and bonobos, they're all highly social animals. We don't do well on our own. In fact, on our own, we tend to make a very tasty meal for a lion or a tiger 
or some other form of great cat. Now together, it's a very different matter. And that brings us to our first Just So story. Imagine it's a nice warm day in the jungle in the Rift Valley of Africa. It's just you and your mates. There's like seven or ten of you. By the way, for this story, you're all males. The females are elsewhere doing female things, and we'll come to them presently. And uh, you're all hanging around, and at a signal from the alpha male, all of you look at each other, and you fall into line, and you drop out of the trees, and you start. No. Do I still have my mic? Can we get them? Ah, oh, thank you so much. And you're walking out of the trees, and you're walking along, oh, I've got light too. You're walking along through your territory. And it's all of you in a line walking through your territory. And you walk all the way through your territory, through the trees, and the plants, and the insects that are the food that you eat in this territory. And you walk all the way up to the boundary of the territory of the Parola Pathicus troop that lives next to you. And they're about the same size troop as yours is. And you're really quiet about it. You walk all the way up to that boundary line, and then you cross over, and you're all still silent. And you fan out across this territory, and what you're looking for in this territory is adolescent male Prolopithecus. And when you find one, you kill him. And that's when the war starts. And all of a sudden, there's a lot of screaming and a lot of shouting and a lot of fighting. And when the dust has all settled, you've taken over some of the land from that other tribe of Parola Pathicus. And in your victory, you carry back the body of that adolescent male that you've killed. You take it back to your troop and you eat it in a victory fest. Now, I know. All sounds kind of nasty and hard, really just not cricket. It's war. Now, how do we know that war stretches back 10 million years? Well, just two months ago, there was a paper published in a magazine called Current Biology. It was reported in The Economist, and it described how primatologists had seen just this behavior in chimpanzees in the wild in Africa. So the scene that I described, it's not 10 million years old, it's not 10,000 years old, it's happening right now. Chimpanzees wage war. 